So in our previous video, we actually ran out of time to cover the end results of prophase one. This is just something I want you to keep track of. We're going to keep a track of this at the end of each flowchart. At the end of prophase one of meiosis one, we end up with 46 chromosomes. Why has the chromosome number stayed the same? It stayed the same simply because we haven't divided chromosomes. We haven't split up chromosomes in any way, shape, or form. What we actually have done is combined chromosomes to form tetrads. What did we combine? We combined the homologous pair of chromosomes. Usually we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, right? And those 23 pairs of chromosomes are usually going to be independent, independent pairs. They're not going to be connected. But what is a tetrad? A tetrad is that connection of homologous chromosomes. And now we have connected 23 um, total uh, tetrads have formed because we've connected each pair specifically. So if we divide 46 by 2, we get 23. We get 23 on one side, 23 on the other. But if you combine all 23 together into one sort of structure, you end up with just 23 individual tetrads. And remember, the tetrads have how many sister chromatids? We counted 1, 2 from mom, and then 1, 2 from dad. That gives us 4 total. So 23 times 4 will give us the number of chromatids. That is 92. So keep an eye on this as we continue. Moving forward, we'll entitle this next flowchart, Meiosis 1 Continued. And so we've established that meiosis consists of four phases, right? Interphase, which was what we did, which is sort of a preparatory phase. We double up a lot of things. Um, we also did prophase one, which is an important phase for synapses, crossing over, and the chiasma formation. Now we can continue talking about the rest of the phases. Meiosis one will continue after prophase one on to um, the next step, which would be metaphase one. Metaphase 1 is very similar to the metaphase that you've already learned about. What happens here, instead of chromosomes lining up, we actually have tetrads. Tetrads, which are the structures that we made in prophase 1, line up at the metaphase plate. So we'll write that down. Line up at meta plate, I'll say, just for short. In addition to that, what we have is the orientation. We have to have the orientation of the homologous chromosomes in some way, shape, or form. So the tetrads are going to line up in a way that each homologous chromosome Remember, there's one from mom and one from dad. The homologous chromosomes orient to opposite poles. Now, I can't really do this justice by describing it. I would highly suggest looking at your textbook and seeing the figure in which the homologous chromosomes literally point in opposite directions because they're going to be splitting, and they're going to be splitting away from each other, utilizing those microtubules shortening, those microtubules um, sort of undergoing depolymerization. But this process is done because why did we even combine in the first place? The whole purpose of forming the tetrad was what? The whole purpose was to do crossing over. Once you've done crossing over, you have to separate, and this is what's going to be part of that separation. We're preparing for separation in metaphase one. And the last thing I want to talk about in terms of metaphase one is that both sister kinetochores of pair, let's say both sister kinetochores of pair attach to one fiber from opposite, uh, from opposite poles. So we'll say attach to one fiber from opposite poles. In a nutshell, this is basically stating that everything is getting ready to separate. The tetrads are getting ready to separate into individual chromosomes like they were originally. They don't want to be combined anymore. Once you've crossed over, once you've created the synapses, you don't need to be combined anymore. You actually have to remember, meiosis is all about to get smaller, right? It's all about getting smaller. So you have to somehow get smaller because right now you're really big. You're a tetrad. You're four chromatids. You're a four chromatid structure. That's too big. You actually have to get down to one chromatid. So if you divide a four chromatid structure in half, what type of structure do you end up with on both sides? Two chromatids and two chromatids. That's what we want. That's what we're preparing for. That's what metaphase one is all about. So let's talk about the actual division. The actual division will occur during anaphase one. Anaphase one is all about disjunction. The technical term for this tetrad separating into the original two chromatid structure that it was before the connection was made is called disjunction. Disjunction can be defined as the homologous chromosomes separate from their tetrad structure. Something we've already established but worth writing again in just um, word form. So they've separated from their tetrad structure and now are there in their individual um, chromosome two chromatid structure. In addition, what we have to remember is that in anaphase one, at least, the sister chromatids 
remain attached at centromeres. This is an important concept. You might be wondering, well, if the sister chromatids remain attached at the centromeres, what was the whole point of combining? We know the point of combining was not about the sister chromatids. It was about the homologous chromosomes, sharing information with each other, crossing over with each other. The sister chromatids did not participate in this crossing over. The non-sister chromatids did. They did because they're the ones that are going to be separating or let's say, uh, mixing information between mom and dad. You don't want mom's sister chromatids crossing over with mom's sister chromatid. That doesn't make sense. You're not recombining. You're not creating new combinations. You want the sister chromatid from mom and the sister chromatid from dad, two separate sister chromatids combined at that chiasma. You want them to cross over. They're going to remain attached though. The ones that are from mom, so let's say mom and dad, they're going to remain attached because they themselves are going to divide independently later on. So the thing that separates are the homologous chromosomes. The thing that stays attached are the sister chromatids. Highly, highly suggest watching the videos on the playlist so you can actually see this happening. Moving forward, um, the chromosomes are going to be acting independently. This is something I've established very briefly, but something I want to talk about a little bit more so. What I mean by the chromosomes acting independently is that each pole, because remember there are two poles, receives random mix um, of maternal and paternal chromosomes. Matt and Pat Chromo, I'll say. Why is it random? The reason why we have a random mix is simply because we want to promote genetic diversity. We want the combination of mom and dad to sort of mix around and get this difference so that you end up being you. You're a combination of your mom and dad. How is that possible? That's possible because of this independent act that the chromosomes do. They randomly disperse. The amount that goes from mom and the amount goes from dad is randomly dispersed at each pole. There's not a specific amount that's given because that would not promote a great amount of diversity. Uh, last thing we want to talk about in anaphase is non-disjunction. Non-disjunction is the exact opposite of disjunction. This is going to occur when one or more homologous chromosomes don't separate. One or more HC don't separate, let's just say, SEP for short. Both actually are going to go to one pole. We don't need to know the absolute consequences of this just yet. In further courses like genetics, you'll actually learn this into much greater detail. But just know that non-disjunction can also happen. And it can happen specifically during anaphase 1. And it can also happen during anaphase 2, which we'll look at later on. But just know that non-disjunction is when this doesn't happen, when they don't separate, when that whole tetrad stays as a tetrad and goes to one side, goes to one pole as a tetrad. That's not good for the cell. We'll talk about those consequences, I think, later on when we continue our discussion on genetics and um, genetic diseases. Lastly, I want to talk about telophase, specifically telophase 1. So we've completed anaphase, we've separated the homologous chromosomes, which just underwent um, the crossing over event in prophase 1. We lined them up. Once we lined them up, we separate them. Now we have telophase. Telophase is when we have the chromosomes actually are going to partially decondense. So chromos partially decondense meaning that they're starting to go back to what structure? Back to chromatin, because we're going to do this all over again. So we have to go back to the original cycle. The original part of the cycle was in the chromatin state. That's what we're doing here. In addition, the nuclear envelope regenerates. So we'll say nuclear envelope um, regeneration, so regen um, at each pole. Why at each pole? Because we have to create two independent um, daughter cells right now. So we have to create two nuclei, two nuclear envelopes for that reason. And then lastly, um, I know cytokinesis is a separate step altogether, but we're just going to put it underneath tele te telophase, um, telophase 1 specifically, um, just for the purposes of saving space. Um, we'll say cytokinesis occurs. We know what cytokinesis is. This is when we separate the cells. But now I, you should absolutely know that the end result of meiosis 1, the end result of meiosis 1 is two haploid cells, two haploid cells produced. This is something you just have to know. Two haploid cells are produced because why? Because each cell only has one set, only one set of chromosomes. And in addition, each set has how many chromatids? Each set with two SC. 
This is going to be important when we look at the number of chromosomes, the number of tetrads, and the number of chromatids. Keep in this in mind. Again, why did we become haploid all of a sudden? Because we've divided. We've gotten smaller. We've doubled up the DNA. Remember, we doubled up the DNA in interphase. Now we've just halved it, and we've created two haploid cells. But remember, what's the overall goal? The overall goal is to create four haploid cells, so we're going to have to go another division event, and that's going to be meiosis 2. But before we do my meiosis 2, we have to complete interkinesis. Remember, this was step 3 of our all, all total steps. This was step 2. Meiosis 1 was step 2. Oops, let me just fix that. Okay, right there. So we have to do interkinesis. Interkinesis is simply, all you need to know is that in this situation, we have no DNA synthesis, and we have, uh, it's a very short a phase. That's all you literally need to know. Just know interkinesis is sort of a, a phase in which the cell is going to take a bit of a break, let's say. So this is meiosis 1. We've completed meiosis 1. In the next video, I'll um, do an end of meiosis 1 sort of chromosome, tetrad, and chromatid number just for the purposes of time.